Okay. All right. So today's um, theme or uh, what we're going to be talking about and exploring today. Hey, Amy, thanks for the heart is um, how to care without clinging, how to care without clinging. And so you might just sense for yourself um, what that means to you. You know, is it even possible that we can care without clinging? And let me unpack uh, what I mean by clinging, right? Because clinging, it's, it's caring is, is wonderful. And we need to care. And the heart naturally cares deeply. Um, but what can shut that down and what can, can pre prevent us from true care is when we get, um, when we cling to a view, when we cling to an outcome. So there's a way, and we'll be exploring that today through the teaching of equanimity or upeka, um, which is the Pali word for equanimity. We're gonna be exploring that today as we um, work with this theme of how to care without clinging, because we certainly don't want to shut down the heart's capacity to care because things don't go our way, right? We can care even when things aren't going our way or even when outcomes don't, aren't what we want them to be or aren't what we think they should be, right? And there's a lot of, I know in myself, you know, boy, I have a very, <laughs> I have a very uh, strong feeling about this election. And I know that if I'm clinging too much to the outcome, that I won't really be um, useful. And so if, if that makes sense, right? Like when we're too wrapped up in an outcome, right? Um, we lose our capacity to be really responsive in the present moment and to show up the way that um, you know, the wisdom of the moment is calling us forth to show up. So welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here. I wasn't sure like if I'd have anyone <laughs> show up on election day um, or, or not, but I, I'm so happy to be having this, not just for you, but also for me to be coming together in the sacred space and really practicing these, um, practicing these teachings that really do point us to true freedom. True freedom exists, you know, regardless of circumstances or conditions working out the way we want them to. And when we're not clinging to outcome, we're just more able to respond with wisdom and compassion and take aligned, powerful action because we're not kind of like trying to, to manipulate um, the external world in such a way as to please us. Um, that being said, I want to just start off. We're going to, you know, we're going to um, enter into our meditation here. I need to be here today more than ever. Oh, good, Marilyn, me too. <laughs> um, and so what we will be talking about the teaching of equanimity or Upeka, what that is and how we can cultivate it um, after we sit. But for now, I would love for folks to just start right away popping into the chat you know, what, where are you beginning your practice at today? How are you feeling? You know, are you excited? Are you anxious? Are you fearful? Are you hopeful? Are you, um, you know, maybe you're feeling things that don't have anything to do with election day. Um, you know, whatever it is that your heart is feeling, go ahead and share that in the chat if you like. And I would encourage us to do that. Um, also, I would love to know your aspiration. What's your intention for being here? What is it that you're really needing to feel or receive? Let's go ahead and do that now. Where are you at? How are you feeling? Feeling grounded. Thanks, Birgit. Heart is wide open, feeling love. Thank you, Amy. Beautiful. Um, what? I can't control election. <laughs> Joanne, feeling peaceful and my intention is to stay that way. It's so funny, Joanne, but I feel like, I think we connected like in this way in 2016. I remember that. I think that that is not interesting. So it's funny because the Buddha has this story that I've always loved. Like, it's like, maybe so, 
you know, maybe so like we think something happens and oh, it's terrible. But the question can be like, well, maybe so, like maybe not, right? Like I think about 2016 and the election and, um, you know, so many students like Joanne that I got to um, connect with um, because of the, <laughs> the, the, the stress of the time, you know, it, it calls us to practice. I don't know about you, but I've never been called to um, practice because I'm feeling really good. Oftentimes I've like the most intense change in my life for the good has happened because of pain. Um, let me see, I'm gonna read through more of these. Amy, body is not cooperating though. Yeah, so my encouragement for you here, Amy, is to um, you know be with what's arising in your body, even if it's unpleasant or uncomfortable, you don't have to like it, but just allow it to be part of your practice. I feel good, I had a nice one last week that I'm still writing off off of cool mostly i'm just trying to keep my meditation practice charged and going yeah the story of we'll see yeah we never know you know we never know um if something is truly bad or something is truly good like it's the judgments that we make about the events that are happening in our in our world and in our lives um can really open us up to agency and to aligned action or it can shut us down um, let me see, um, intention, stir my inner fire so I can do the things I want to move forward. Yes. And allow myself enough rest while doing so to listen to my inner guidance. Good. Okay. My end is pretty busy and I feel like I need to run or exert some energy. My intention is equanimity. Good. Yeah. It could, could be really good, Aaron, after this, um, meditation to go for a run, you know, to move your body. Marilyn was mentioning that a little while ago, how vital and important movement is to our, um, you know, to our peace of mind and heart. That's the plan. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and sit together. <sighs> so, you know, just like you can close your eyes or you can leave them open with a soft gaze. Just let yourself arrive. And like sense as you arrive here in sacred space that you can drop the burden. You know, any burdens that you might be carrying around the future or the past, you can set them down quite powerfully in this moment. And one of the ways that we do that is one, we come all the way into the body. It's hard to perseverate and to be lost in thinking when we're devoted to the body and being in the body. In your body, in your hands and feet, in your belly. with the steadiness of inhale and exhale. And as we do this, it's like we're choosing, you know, I'm not gonna be loyal to my suffering. I'm going to acknowledge that sometimes I am, you know, sometimes I do get lost in worry or comparison or judgment rehashing or remembering or even fantasizing. And sometimes I prefer my what if mind to the reality, the bare awareness of just this moment. And recognizing that for now I'm going to unhook from loyalty to my suffering, I'm gonna unhook from attachment to my thinking, rehearsing, planning, remembering, fantasizing, anticipating, dreading, comparing, rehashing. These are all kind of shades of the thinking mind.
And so let's just, let's just stay closer to our breath. And to soften the body. And to choose moment by moment to attend to what's arising with care. You can let your belly be really soft. You can open up to the sounds in the room. You don't have to manage your internal experience. There will be experiences that are pleasant and unpleasant and neutral. Our tendency is to cling to pleasant. And we do that by trying to curate our inner experience. We try to still the mind or enliven the heart or somehow feel different than how we just feel.
where we try to ignore unpleasant experiences. We think about other things. We judge, we fix, we fiddle to try to get rid of discomfort. Take your hands off the controls. Anything that you notice arising inside of your attention, pleasant or unpleasant, just meeting it with a, a yes or a this too. Remembering that you're not trying to make yourself like something that you don't. But allowing. Allowing both the experience and your craving or aversion in relationship to it. You might sense what it feels like to care. What does caring feel like? Before it attaches to an object, what does caring feel like? Like what would it feel like to just care about your own experience right now?
If you find that you get kind of contracted around a story or an impression that arises from within, we relax. If an emotion arises, peace or restlessness, or something else, let there be a care. If the body reveals an achy place, or a place of real pleasure. Like let there be a care. If the mind is busy or aggravated or calm or peaceful. Let there be a care. You might scan your body and just really relax. You can really just give up trying to get it right. Instead, just letting there be a kindness or a caring towards whatever you're noticing. Whether it's pleasant or unpleasant or neutral.
It's been the last few minutes of our meditation. I'm just doing a little metta practice. So if you like, you can place your hand on your heart. You can sort of shift your posture if that would feel good. I'm going to chant for ourselves, I, for those we love and hold dear, you, for those we might have difficulty with, they, and then for all beings everywhere, we. And feel free to chant with me once you kind of sense that you have the, the tune. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be well. May they be peaceful and at ease. May they be happy. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be well. May they be peaceful and at ease. May they be happy. May we be filled with loving kindness. May we be well. May we be peaceful and at ease. May we be happy. Making your eyes open when you're ready. <laughs> Go ahead and take a moment to um, orient to your space. <sighs> and you can also remember that when we orient, we look behind us. Okay. So, and then we can allow our gazes to meet each other. <laughs> Blessings, welcome, welcome again. Now we're gonna unpack some things. We're gonna explore this um, theme of, hi. We're gonna explore this theme of um, how to care without clinging. This does not mean we don't have preferences. As long as we're alive, we're gonna have preferences. That's not what unattached, not being attached is. When we don't have preferences, we seek being, we, we, we're not human anymore. Um, so it's really natural to want things to be a certain way or to want certain things and to want pleasure and not like pain. That is human. So we want to like 
refrain from the, the really subtle judgments that the ego can throw at us when we start to explore this terrain of equanimity, which is to make us wrong for having really natural human preferences, to have, for having really natural human emotions in response to things not working out the way we want them to. Um, that's just human. What, what these practices help us do is like have the space and the care to relate to everything that arises without trying to hold it or push it away. Um, so I'm gonna re I'm gonna circle back to um, what the Buddha said about equanimity, you know, praise and blame, gain and loss, pleasure and sorrow, come and go like the wind. To be happy, rest like a giant tree in the midst of them all. I love that. I love it even more. Like the longer I'm a Dharma teacher, the more I love that quote. Because isn't it true? Like in anything that we're doing, we will be praised and we will be blamed. It's a given. No matter how good a person you are, it doesn't matter. Life shows us this all the time, doesn't it? We will be praised and we will be blamed, right? It's like, you know, and then, and then you know, um, fame and ill repute. You know, this is another aspect that I don't think this quote points to is that, you know, if we have fame, we will also have uh, opportunities that tarnish our reputation. Both of them come and go like the wind. It's impersonal. You know, and I think about like the impersonal, I get to practice equanimity every time I give one of these talks and I see people leave, you know, I could think a lot of things about that, right? I could think, you know, they really don't like me. Or if I have a big group, they really like me. Either one is suffering if I hold on to it. Do you know what I mean? Like either one is going to cause me to suffer and not be as useful, which is what I talked about in the beginning of this talk, because I'm going to be preoccupied with that, right? Oh, now maybe I may not do another one if like no one likes it or, oh my God, what? So any, anything that takes us out of the moment gets to be questioned. Like any thought that takes us out of the moment, we can ask ourselves, is it useful? Talked about this in a video yesterday. Is it useful? Like, is it useful for me to perseverate about this thing that I said and wonder if it was the right thing? Like, is that useful? <laughs> if it's not useful, our spiritual devotion, that spiritual warrioress or warrior cuts through it just like I will I will drop the burden I'm just gonna drop it like not even you know I'm just gonna in a moment that's like the, why the sword is such powerful iconography it just cuts through things you don't need to like analyze it and sift through it and do all that stuff just cut through it you know just cut through and in practice when we're able to do this um, and this is what we, we sharpen that knife of cutting through the bullshit. Um, the, all the ways that we hold back. And I, I want to say like holding back as in, how do I hold back my energy from this moment? Right? How am I preoccupied with something that's not arising in this moment? Any of that is hold back. Right. So, so this is a, a bigger container, <laughs> like, you know, this is a different way to like define that common thing that you'll hear people saying, don't hold back. What does that mean in practice terms? It means if there's anything that's pulling at your attention, that's not right here now, likely, likely it's delusion, you know, likely, unless it's like, you know, someone gave a, I was talking about the what if mind earlier. And someone was giving a great example, a teacher that I was listening to that said, the what if mind is great when it comes to things like, you know, wearing a bike helmet, you know, like I could think, well, what, what if I get in an accident, that thought, you know, 
or seeing people get in accidents had the helmet being developed. And the thought, what if I get in an accident will have me maybe put a helmet on? Useful. And then I drop it. Do I got all the safety things? Okay, good. Now I can just give myself to this moment. I can be fully engaged. Anything that pulls us out of full engagement with what's right here and right now needs to be questioned as part of our practice. I can't express this enough. And so given that, let's talk about upekka or equanimity, which is one of the four Brahma Viharas that the Buddha taught about. The four heavenly abodes are just qualities of the heart that are natural and inherent to the heart. In other words, you don't have to find them. As a matter of fact, if you try to find them, you will come up empty handed because they're already there. But we can cultivate them similar to, you know, a seed planted in the ground. If you don't water it, it won't sprout. So we got joy in here. It's called mudita. That's not what today's topic is, but that's joy. We got love in here. That's or friendliness in here. That's metta. We've got, um, we've got compassion in here and that's caring or karuna. But today we're going to talk about the seed of equanimity which is this imperturbability that is thought to be the, um, the, the weaver of all of those four qualities of heart. Like when I'm tapped into those qualities of my heart, when I'm, when I'm watering them regularly and they're growing and sprouting, I just receive life better. Life feels better. Food tastes better. My kids are more beautiful. My husband is more radiant. My friends are the best friends in the whole wide world. You get it? My best life is not outside of me, nor is yours. I hate that languaging. My best life is if it's something I need to get and bring into this moment. Like it's out there in some future moment. And when I find it, I'll know it. No, it's not to be found. It's an uncovering. Right? And, and we can't live our best life if we're all up here and we're not here. Upeka or equanimity like weaves them all together, it gives balance to all of the like good feeling heart qualities, the sweetness of the heart that leads to a glad mind. Right? So when we water these seeds within the heart by practice, it does affect the thoughts that we think. The thoughts are sweeter when the heart is glad. And so what is equanimity? That's what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pack what it is, and then I'm going to um, talk about how we can support it. So um, equanimity is the ability to see, the ability to see without being caught by what we see. The ability to see without being caught by what we see. It's an ease that comes from seeing a bigger picture. Like I was, Param had mentioned, like, like maybe <laughs> this is great. Maybe this is awful. Maybe, maybe, you know. And so it's like this: don't know mind, um, a knowing not to take offensive words personally. That's a big one. I would say this with this one, offensive words personally. I don't know of anyone who, when, when like offensive words are shared with them, um, wouldn't feel an ouch. So this doesn't mean, yeah, <laughs> this doesn't mean that you don't have the ouch. Don't we, we don't want to have the ouch, do we? That's part of equanimity is like, okay, the ouch is going to happen. It's going to happen. You know, if you hear something, if someone says something to you that you don't like, you're going to feel an ouch. But we can even hold that ouch with care. But we, we also need to realize that ouch has happened, right? So not taking offense means I'm not attached to the ouch. Like I feel it, I might notice my mind blaming and criticizing and complaining and defending and wanting to get at that person for offending me, for calling me something, for whatever it is. And I can watch all of that happen. But, but there's nothing that will take the ouch moment away. <laughs> when we really, really, really soften towards this, when we really get this in our bones and we stop being guarded against ouch moments in our life, 
it's funny how the ouch moments change, but you know, to be guarded against those moments is suffering, you know, freedom comes when we really understand that, ah, uh, you know, I'm going to offend some people no matter what. And I'm going to please some people no matter what. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people who don't give a shit either way about me or what I do. That's truth, right? So it's impersonal. It's, it's true for all of us. It's true for all of us. Um, so it's also, so I like this term as I, I, I found it in my research, um, grandmotherly love. So you might think of upeka or equanimity as grandmotherly love. And you think about a grandma, right? Is she's less likely to be caught up in the drama of her grandchildren's lives as a mother would because she's gone through it, right? So her heart has been uh, grown and cultivated through having her own children. And now she's like, right? Grandmotherly love is like, you know, I might see your, your little you know, mischievous ways, but they're in, even those are endearing to me. You know, I'm not going to let you harm yourself or harm someone else, but there's likely less criticism, less blame, less shame around the grandchild. We enjoy them more. So you can think of this as like grandmotherly love. It is protection. I love this word protection from the constantly changing winds of praise and blame, success and failure, pleasure and pain, fame and disrepute. No matter what we do, we will encounter all of these wins. Praise and blame, success and failure, pleasure and pain, fame and disrepute. My son, who's 10, beautifully at the breakfast table this morning just said, you know, when really good things happen, really bad things happen. And I might say like, well, you know, like I, I you know, I, I might want to try to shelter him from the truth, but like, absolutely he's right. Now that doesn't mean that he can't enjoy really good things, but he's aware enough. He's lived enough life to realize that bad things can happen too. Now one doesn't cause the other. We have that conversation, but it is true that really good things will happen and really bad things happen too. And it's impersonal right? Now we can protect our hearts from the, like, from being blown around so much from all of this. The first is just, just having this conversation, just this awareness of the impersonal nature of this phenomenon is, is protection of the heart, right? It's just, it, it just is a protection of the heart, you know? Don't take anything personally, as Don Miguel Ruiz said um, in, in his Four agreements. That's equanimity. Don't take anything personally. And realize you will. Realize your nervous system will. Realize your nervous system will have an ouch moment. Because that's just being human. We're, but we're not our nervous systems. So part of equanimity also means I'm less attached to my nervous system. I take care of my nervous system. I care deeply for my nervous system, but I don't let it drive the car. Don't let it make my decisions for me. And so next I want to talk about what supports it. And before I run out of time here, I just want to mention something I didn't mention earlier that these talks are offered by donation and they're freely offered too. If you can't make a donation, please still come, but uh, your donation really makes a difference. So you can donate to me via PayPal or Venmo or Zelle. Um, there should be a link to donate that was attached to the email that you got to, to, to do this class. Um, so, so what supports it? Uh, being in integrity supports it because when we're in integrity, we have some confidence in our actions and our words, right? And we can all work, improve in this department. Every single person, you know, um, is not apps is, is not, <laughs> doesn't have some like areas to look at here. And when we look at these things, we always want to do so with a lot of friendliness and care. Um, the next thing is uh, with, with integrity that supports equanimity is confidence in our capacity for freedom. I mentioned this earlier in our last sit, I think, but we need to have confidence 
none of this bullshit that somehow you're so broken, this isn't true for you. That's so self-absorbed. It, it's, it's just not true. It's like the other flavor of like, I'm so great as I'm such a piece of shit. Both of them are problematic. So don't go on either of those directions. We have a confidence in your capacity to have freedom, right? If it, was, if it was true for anyone, it's true for you. You have the same stuff in you that anyone else does. Um, another thing that supports it is a well-developed mind. So practices like meditation that we just did, anything that supports a calm, concentrated, um, mind mindfulness is something that really supports this being uh, developing the capacity to see without being so hooked to the preference. Um, a sense of well being absolutely helps to cultivate upeka. And don't let your sense of well being be left up to chance. Let me say that again. Don't let your sense of well being be left up to chance. So, you know, examples are just simple things like taking time to, you know, enjoy your tea or enjoy a sunset, you know, I, like whatever that trite saying is stop and smell the roses, but do you? It's a good question, right? So don't wait for well-being to happen to you by chance. We have to create it. We can cultivate it. Um, wisdom is another thing that helps equanimity, being able to separate. This is so hard. I can barely say this, <laughs> but I'm going to. Um, separating people from their actions. Um, and I mean, you know, it's, that's like, it's a hard pill to swallow. It is for me as I say it, but, but this is, you know, um, Part of this is understanding that we can wish the best for people, but ultimately they are the carriers of their own karma. People who do bad shit, like it will come back. It's a law. There's like no way around it. You know, it's just the truth. It is karma. And so if someone's acting badly and we see lots of examples of this, um, but we also see lots of examples of people acting well and we don't notice because we're so freaking focused on what's not going right and what people are doing wrong that's the negativity bias that marlene and i are going to help you dismantle in our upcoming workshop called happy for no reason it's a day-long meditation retreat happening happening september 5th or december 5th december 5th 11 a.m if you're here on question? this call yeah parham go ahead if you're here on this call okay, let me just finish i'd love oh, for sorry. we'd love for you to come okay go ahead parham yeah, what happens if somebody's acting badly again and again and again and again? Yes. So something we have choice about is, um, you know, well, what's our relationship to that person? Because that's something we do have agency and control over. Boundaries, cut, just not having relationships with people who you continually experience negative implications around because they act badly is a very wholesome decision. This does not mean you have to like, you know, be around people who, who are not in integrity at all. As a matter of fact, you know, the Buddha talked a lot about surrounding yourself with Sangha, which is like us here. We're a Sangha. This is a spiritual community. We're like, we're gathered together for like a higher purpose. Um, and so, yeah, boundaries, super important, super important. And we are responsible for our boundaries. No one else's. And we are responsible for upholding our boundaries. No one else's. And oftentimes we have to do it over and over and over again. And if we find that we have to keep erecting boundaries, the same ones over and over and over again with people, it's a really wholesome decision to separate yourself from them. Um, so that's, that's my answer to, to that. At the same time, we can look at someone and say, you know, I do, I've, I've sent Trump meta. I have, because he's one of the people I have the most difficulty with. And I don't even know him, but I do, you know? It's like, it's not, it's not like some of the, and I, 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 that's why when I say this, I'm like, oh, but realizing that um, we get what we give, we really do. There's nothing, and I was sharing this with my son, 
And like, it may look like they're not getting, um, they're not getting hurt in the process of hurting, but it's a given that they are promise you. They are no one hurts from a place of feeling really safe and secure and good about themselves and about life. Everyone hurts from fear, but it does not mean that you condone their behavior by being in their space. Um, you can block their number, you can block their access to you in any way that you need to. Um, and then the last one is insight. Realize everything is always changing. So letting go is the only thing that really makes sense. It's the only thing that's sane. <laughs> I may love this thing that's happening and I can really enjoy it and take pleasure from it and it will go away, right? Just eat a piece of cake. That's a great example of impermanence. Like you taste it and it tastes so good and it's going. The minute you eat it, it's like gone. It's like, it's gonna go away. You will not have it forever. The same is true for uncomfortable things that happen in our life. Pain cannot last. It's impossible. You know, we can even really try to make it last through unwholesome thinking patterns, but it, will, it, it can, cannot sustain itself in intensity or severity over time, it will always fluctuate. And so realize everything is always changing and freedom comes when we don't hold on so tightly. This doesn't mean we're not passionate. It doesn't mean we don't love like fiercely and wholly and completely. It doesn't mean that we don't enjoy our lives with every fiber of our being. But we also have to realize that no matter what we do, the ouch moment is going to happen. You know, so what's our relationship to the ouch moment? Do we criticize it or do we bring it care? Okay. And I, I let that kind of rest with you as we um, close out today's um, Dharma talk. Um, let's let me, uh, so go ahead and, and let me know in the chat, like, what's your takeaway? We can love people from afar. That's from Marlene. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to have information about happy for no reason. I think the landing page is done, but I need to check. You'll get it in the email. You'll get a lot of emails about it. Uh, but please do pop, pop into the chat. Like what's your takeaway from today's talk about caring without clinging or equanimity. We cannot leave our well-being up to chance. Mm, yeah, good, Erin. Marlene, thumbs up that one too. <laughs> it's so funny how many things we leave up to chance. Notice the good too, right? That's something else that we don't need to leave up to chance or we won't see it. Um, this week I experienced some temporary fame, but I also found that there was some negativity and criticism. That's right. Thanks for reminding me that both are. <laughs> yeah. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. What if it's not as good next week? Suffering. I did great this time, but what about next time? You know, that's suffering. That's when I'm attached to fame. Um, be like a tree. Yes, Joanne. Um, good reminder is a wholesome decision to step away from relationships that are unhealthy. Yes. A hundred percent. It is our responsibility. Yeah. Um, all right. So as we, um, we, as I, uh, we come off this call, you might just take a look around the space and some folks are on camera and some aren't, but I'm just sending you all so much love and many blessings. May you be healthy. May you be happy. May you be well, and may you have lasting and, um, consistent peace of heart and mind. Um, let me see one more, one more, Amy, so lovely to share space with the song guy. I'm con constantly reverting my thinking back to equanimity because it's sometimes indulged in judgment. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. The mind, if we're not aware of it, will take us, um, down some places we don't want to visit. So I watching the mind is really, really important. Um, all right. You can take yourself off mute and say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good luck today. Mm, you're welcome. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Have a beautiful Take day. Care. Thank Bye. you, Karina. You're welcome.